Thanks, Kent. Uh, just wrapping up Saturday. You know, just thrilled with our players' toughness, uh, togetherness, and then the execution down the stretch to find a way to get a big win on the road uh, against a really well-coached South Carolina team. Uh, and now we shift our attention here. Uh, kind of a rare setup coming up three straight home games, Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, uh, starting off tomorrow night with uh, Kentucky. Obviously, Kentucky coming off an incredible performance on Saturday at Auburn, uh, both ends of the court, offensively and defensively. Really talented team, uh, third leading scoring team in the country, lead the country in three-point percentage. Uh, their assist to turnover ratio is almost two to one. I uh, just think they're fantastic. So it's a great opportunity for us tomorrow night. Hoping to have a great crowd, great atmosphere uh, coming off the big win at number 11, South Carolina. Uh, yeah, I mean, Kentucky's also a top 10 team in fast break points. They like to get out and transition. I know you guys have played a lot of those kinds of teams this year. Just what, what can you learn from maybe past experience that can help you in this game? I think just the urgency you have to play with uh, to get back and try and get your defense set. They have unbelievable speed. Uh, their guards are so explosive off the dribble. They change ends of the floor quickly. Uh, I think a big part of that is you can't turn the ball over and you definitely can't take bad shots because they make you pay every time. Uh, the other thing they've done a great job of, top five in the country in block shots, which also fuels their transition attack. So. Uh, I think it's a combination of the discipline and effort you have to play with defensively there to get back and set your defense and then being smart on the offensive end to value the ball and get quality, high quality shots. Just back to the to the victory. You guys have been in that situation before, but this time you're able to finish it off. What kind of mental boost do you think that gives your team? And and how do you still replicate that fight if you if you need it? Well, I hope, I hope the players take a lot of confidence from it to finally get over the hump there. Uh, you know, it's tough. You know, you're in that same exact situation four days earlier in Gainesville and uh, unable to finish the game. Uh, but credit to our players. I thought it speaks to their resolve and resiliency. Came in, practiced, had two really good days of practice going into the South Carolina game. And you learn so many lessons uh, through, through sports. And, you know, Jordan, who didn't convert the shot at, in Gainesville, ends up scoring seven points in the last minute of the game at South Carolina. Uh, the big and one uh, does a great job getting to the free throw line there with five seconds and you still you're, you're there on the road in front of 17,000 people down one. Uh, you got to have some toughness and composure to step up and knock those down and, and he did a incredible job. So it was, was really happy for him. Uh, and then just overall our team because the effort's been there and uh, to finally find a way to get the execution done in the, in the last minute and get the win, something we hope to build on here moving forward uh, with this three-game homestand, four of our last six at home over the next three weeks. Um, there was a lot of discussion about Kentucky's defense a couple of weeks ago, how bad it was and whatnot. But the last two games, have you seen against Ole Miss and Auburn, what did they do differently? Did they change up something or? Uh, Sheldon, I, I would just put on the first possession of the game at Auburn and watch DJ Wagner's defense on the ball. I thought that set the tone for the game for them. Uh, so getting him back in the lineup, his ball pressure was terrific on Saturday. And then they have an anchor at, at the back of their defense now. Uh, 33, I mean, 10 blocks against Ole Miss. Uh, he's cleaning the glass. Uh, it's had a, had a tremendous impact on the back line of their defense. So. Uh, you look at their performance on that end of the court against Ole Miss and then obviously Saturday at Auburn, uh, and it was really good. So, so credit to them for the improvements they've made there. Uh, Coach, this game, it, it's exciting in the present, and then it brings back nostalgia too for a lot of people, LSU, Kentucky basketball over the years. Have you kind of heard about that? Have you uh, maybe John Brady or Dale Brown or any of those coaches that are around talked to you about it? Well, I mean, I watched a lot of those games growing up. You know, Loved SEC basketball for four decades now. So have a lot of respect for, for Kentucky and, and the program they have, the tradition there. Uh, you know, it was fun getting to visit with Dale Brown. I, I sent Coach Brown a picture uh, from where I was sitting as an 11-year-old kid in Knoxville when I watched Chris Jackson score 49. 
uh, in the LSU Tennessee game. So it was fun to you know revisit that. Um, but as we know, every every game stands on its own. You know, I think it's important for our players to to have another good day of preparation today. Uh, they're well aware. They they look at the mock drafts. They they know there's seven Kentucky players in the top 40 and. Uh, they, they know they brought two of the top ten picks in the draft off the bench Saturday in their win against Auburn and have great respect for the program and, and understand what it will take for us uh, to give ourselves an opportunity to win. So that's where our focus is at. And I think our guys really had a good response. You know, we always talk about, you know, how do you respond after the tough loss at Florida? Uh, it's no different after the great win in the last five seconds at South Carolina. It's how, how do you respond? And I thought our players came to work yesterday at practice, ready to turn the page and get ready for this really talented and, and, and disciplined, explosive Kentucky team. Yeah, Coach, um, is there an update on Jalen Cook and uh, I guess Damian and Carlos as well? Yeah, Carlos remains out. Uh, Damian is out, uh, still with the shoulder. And then uh, Cook has a leg injury that cost him the Tennessee game, cost him the game Saturday at South Carolina. We'll see how he is in practice today. Uh, really how he responds in practice today and tomorrow's shoot around will determine it. Wish I had a more definitive answer for you, but uh, we'll just have to see how he is today and tomorrow heading into the game. Coach, obviously you mentioned Kentucky, a great offensive team. Not to equate the two, but with Alabama, you guys got two shots at them. Seemed like both times you're matching them in the first half, but in the second half you kind of can't keep up with that offensive firepower. What needs to change for you to be able to sustain that in this one? Yeah, I think uh, you know you look at every game's different. You know, the last time we played Alabama here at home, I believe we were up by one with about eight minutes to go. Uh, defensive rebounding was just poor. So even when we were able to control or not control, but contain some of their three-point shooting the first 12 minutes of that second half. We weren't able to secure defensive rebounds. Uh, so I, I think it's just a matter of consistency and, and being able to sustain that level of play for 40 minutes. Um, you know, easier said than done. You know, you're playing Alabama. Everyone says, well, you got to slow the game down. Well, that's, that's great in theory, but you know, Alabama has a say in the deal too. You know, Texas A&M tried to slow the game down against them Saturday, and they scored 100 points. You know, so uh, I, I think it's just playing smart on the offensive end. Uh, you can't fuel Kentucky's transition games with a transition game with bad turnovers and, and poor shots. We have got to have really good offensive possessions and uh, just got to fly around defensively. Uh, that was the, one of the things I was really excited about was our improvement on the glass Saturday. South Carolina is a top five offensive rebounding team in our league uh, to hold them to single digit offensive rebounds, single digit second chance points. I uh, thought we really defended the three point line a lot better. Uh, South Carolina was 4 17. They hit two late uh, to add to that. Uh, but you look, you know, I don't know if people realize Kentucky, you know, number one in the country in three point percentage, they shoot over 40%. Uh, I mean, they're an elite shooting team one of the top five mid-range shooting teams in the country as well. So I uh, just have to really compete, fly around, be disciplined to the game plan. Yeah, Jordan kind of spilled the secrets on your uh, re rebounding motivational tactics there in the post-game press. Or did, you, did you hear that? I didn't hear it. No. Um, just Trey and, and what he's been able to kind of provide, you know, in this absence of Jalen. Just what is it? Is it just his tenacity that's really helped put him above? Yeah, I thought live – Saturday, I was really impressed with how hard he played. Going back and watching the film, I would say, you know, in my short time here, it's the hardest a player has played for the entirety of a game. I thought he was just a warrior. 12 rebounds, incredible defensive effort. Um, I, I, you know, he's been really under control offensively. If you go look at his assist to turnover ratio in SEC play, it's, it's I believe, over three to one uh, last time I looked. Uh, so what you hope is that becomes contagious throughout uh, your team. Defensive rebounding has been poor for us at times. So we need all five players on the floor to, to aid in those efforts. And I think the last five games he's averaging seven rebounds a game, which the point guard spots, you know, outstanding. So uh, I was also uh, proud of his maturity on Saturday. Uh, South Carolina, that's where he started his career, played two seasons, had a couple hundred family and friends there. 
you know, sometimes you can go out and try and win the game on your own. I, th I thought he was really disciplined uh, to do the things that he needed to do to help our team win and really start in his role. And uh, that's what we need from him as we go down the, the home stretch here. Yeah, I think Tyrell's probably been playing his best ball um, since he got here last year. I think you guys are pretty big net positive when he's on the court and he's shooting really efficiently. Just what do you think maybe has gone into his improvements over the last couple of weeks and just how important he's going to be for this game? I, w I would always, you know, the box score would tell you to, to point to the three-point shooting, you know, which has been really good for him. Um, I always kind of look at things a little differently. I, I go immediately to mindset. You know, I think it's so important and what we do here in college sports. I think his mindset is, has been really good. And Saturday was a perfect example of that. He started, he had three fouls in three minutes in the first half. Could have easily just called it a day uh, and checked out mentally, but he stayed locked in. Uh, we didn't start in the second half because we didn't want him to get his fourth foul, uh, but really came into the game when we were down 16 with 16 minutes to go and played other than a quick breather, played the rest of the way and played the best basketball of his career here. Uh, was aggressive attacking the basket on some dribble handoffs, hit three huge threes, uh, thought competed on the defensive end. Uh, I think it's something he can really build on as we move forward. You just mentioned the mindset, with just him and Reed and Hunter Dean, you know, having some moments. I mean, do you see the confidence in, on this team kind of developing with these even tight losses and then the victories? Well, I hope so. It's a, and it's a credit to the players. They come to work every day. Uh, the energy and effort and practice has been consistent. And you know, when that's your foundation, it allows you to keep getting better. Uh, we still have a long way to go, but we're definitely making progress. Uh, you look at the two sophomores you mentioned, Tyrell and Jalen, they scored half our points on Saturday. Uh, I, I thought Hunter Dean was awesome. Uh, just did a great job. He's such a smart player. And you know, I've been telling everyone he's a lot more athletic than people think. And you look at some of those lob dunks he got on Saturday and the pressure he was able to put on the rim uh, on ball screens and handoffs opened up the floor for other players as well. Uh, so that, that was the fun thing about Saturday. Everyone who played in, in their own way contributed to the win. And the last 16 minutes is what you want from your team from a toughness and a togetherness standpoint to just focus on eliminating all the distractions and noise and just focus on what matters the most. That allows you to perform at your very best uh, when you have that laser focus. And I, th I thought that's what our players did on Saturday. And uh, it was rewarding to get them to see them celebrating that win in the locker room uh, after the hard fought victory. More on Tyrell, the thing that kind of stands out about those plays he made late offensively were that he's doing them with the ball in his hands versus a lot of the season he's been a catch and shoot guy. So is that kind of a thing that the coaching staff is doing intentionally to get him more on ball reps? And uh, how has he responded to that? Well, he's got great size at 6'7 there at the guard spot. And he's wired to score. And I think when you shoot it so well from three, you know, into the 40 plus percent range, it opens up opportunities for you to attack the basket off the dribble. Um, and we were really searching for a, a better offensive attack there in the second half Saturday, and, and we found a good action for us uh, off some dribble handoffs. And I just thought, you know, Tyrell's a smart player too. He's got great feel for the game. He made the right reads. You know, when they trailed him, he got all the way to the bucket for that big dunk there in the second half. Uh, when they went under a couple ball screens, he stepped behind and, and shot the three. Uh, so I, I just thought he was really dialed in uh, to making the proper reads and making great decisions offensively. Okay, thank you. See you tomorrow night.